So this month's live stream was all about the Cyclops world boss that's roaming around and it was a bit of a combat preview. It was actually a really decent stream. It wasn't as much as what everyone thought but I really liked it and as I've said previously I like seeing in-game stuff and seeing how things are working. But without rambling on anymore we'll just get right into the video now and amongst all the latest information we got this month. So before I jump right into the boss stuff and we see you know the Cyclops and all the cool shit we did this stream we did get some pretty big news from Steven and Intrepid themselves and that was that the pre-order packages for Alpha 2 on Intrepid's website are soon going to be taken down. Now the time frame they're given was 3 months. He did originally at the beginning part of his quote say a few but then he reiterated and he said 3 months. Now I did mention this to people um, and I know a lot of folk misheard it and they said it's going to be there for a few months. They didn't specifically hear him say 3 but he did actually say 3. Um, now it could be extended who knows but personally if you really want to get into alpha 2 if you're part of a guild that's going to be playing in alpha 2 and that's mandatory to be in the guild i would definitely jump in and get that because for us we want alpha 2 players i will no longer be taking on people that are not in alpha 2 and also if you're invested in the game and you want to play i would definitely join in because once they're gone like steven said people are saying that you know he's going to have more alpha 2 packages but i'll put in the exact video below so you know that alpha 2 you won't be able to get into anymore till after alpha 2 testing concludes which that means you're going to be coming in at the beta 1 and 2 stages now there's positives and negatives and if we start with the positives it's if you're in a guild obviously you want to be playing that 12 to 14 15 month however long this persistent alpha runs and it will be as long as intrepid deem necessary which will probably be a fucking long time and for me that is a lot of free game content it's you know it's also experiencing these things at the beginning of an mmo i believe one of the biggest niche MMOs that's ever going to be about and getting involved this shit is totally priceless and it's also a good way of getting involved with a community in the guild early on before the game launches so when the game does launch if you're semi-hardcore to hardcore you really have that advantage but not just that I'll be honest half the games are pure dog shit and I genuinely believe Alpha 2 is probably going to be better than most launch games there is going to be wipe student it and we are there to test and scrutinize and make sure we fix all the bugs but that's part and parcel and I think everyone knows that going in and if you don't you do now now the negatives would be you're not too bothered you're willing to wait till beta one and two maybe a year year and a half or more down the line and also you don't have the money to pay and that's cool and if that's your situation i would just personally not pay in watch other people stream i'll have lots of content in there's other content creators and i'm sure intrepid will be doing a lot of streams and coverage of it themselves but if you are wanting to get involved early on with a competitive guild or community i would say jump into the alpha 2 because many won't take it on personally ourselves we only have a hundred people we're willing to take on and if i was to have 30 percent of my guild not playing in alpha 2 and not going to be playing moves for a year and a half i'm relying and holding our guild up in the hopes that that other 30 or 40 percent do decide to play alpha 2 down the line and don't leave to join another guild because they're not currently playing with us that's my advice but i'm a proper sad nerd when it comes to this game and i'm heavily invested in it even without the youtube i just genuinely can't wait to play because it it's got everything i wanted but they are the facts that is exactly what's being said and i would just go off that for now but it's totally up to you but what i'm going to do is jump into the next part of the video now but i thought i'd give that coverage because it is a big thing i didn't expect and personally i'll be honest i've been telling people don't worry who are in our guild about getting the alpha 2 yet if you're a bit skin or you don't have the money at the side right now because i don't believe they're going to knock it on the head this year so it was actually a shock to me but i fully understand understand it they've got a shitload of players wanting to get involved and i can understand them maybe not wanting to strain the servers or overstretch themselves too much because these are a lot of testers it's going to be a heavily populated alpha 2 phase but now with my mini ramblings out the way and i, I am fucking pretty excited because i really see this as hitting milestones personally for intrepid and i think we are going in the right direction for alpha 2 and i can't wait but back onto the live stream this month and what we actually found out it was a shorter one with gameplay of a video that was only about 20 minutes long but it's still pretty decent and i really love the gameplay ones and it was all about a world boss that we fight called to mark the cyclops now he's been mentioned in the past live streams and there's been some art shown during the art section but this is the first time we've got the scene in game and he's a world boss that you're going to find roaming around the world obviously now they've made it so he's roaming so that no matter where you go and what path you decide to take there's always going to be that chance that you're going to run into something that you didn't expect or you didn't see last 
last time and these kind of conflicts or situations that are dangerous risk versus reward that you get yourself in there and that really does add to that selling pitch that they say about a dynamic world because you cannot say that is not dynamic and ever changing because the situation can be in a quiet area and you don't expect it or it could be in a heavy pvp area you're about to kill it then you get jumped to reset the health there's so many different things that can happen here that make replayability and a fun game experience with just this one boss alone now the first way you're going to know you're about to run into him is it due to the audio cues intrepid have put in place when it comes to tamak you're going to be able to hear his massive footsteps when he's literally walking around the world and as you've seen in the live stream if you're in a wooded area like say the riverlands he's going to be able to interact with the environment and knock down trees so you're probably going to hear that too so you kind of have some warning is there now bear in mind when you've seen steven following him around he was in god mode so there was no aggro you're not going to be able to do that unless you want absolutely decimate now we do know tamak's going to be at level 16 to 32 player boss and he's got about 300k health he's meant to be one of the first bosses you face to introduce you to like the raiding system in ashes of creation now it isn't necessarily a main raid because it is an open world boss but it kind of gives you that open world vibe and you kind of know what you're getting yourself into so the first phase is basically physical attacks and he's going to be using the tree that'll root players into the same spot for a few seconds he also heals during this phase by pulling fungus off the tree he carries and then he starts eating it to heal himself one of his main attacks during this phase is the tank spike attack which is where he's going to smash the tree into the tank you should block this or you really do have to block this or it'll do a shit ton of damage to you it also does aoe splash damage that anyone nearby is going to want to avoid or at least try to avoid or you're going to take the hit too the next part of the boss fight was to mock slamming his tree into the ground where it becomes a separate entity called tomax totem this will spawn healing caps that will grow and that's going to need to be focused by the dps as if it healing caps get to full size tomac will go over to them stomp on them and heal a massive amount of percentage of his health when not destroying the healing caps you're going to want to focus on the totem and players can also be healed by the mushrooms once Tomax Totem has been destroyed, he's going to become more angry and enraged, and the designer described it as his more primal Cyclops giant nature coming into play or showing. In the phase, he'll do a lot more damage, so the healers are going to need to work a lot harder, but Tomac himself can no longer heal. Now, once he was killed, he dropped three rare weapons and one heroic. These were the Sword of Briar Home, Longbow of Briar Home, Shortbow of Briar Home, and the Mace of Briar Home. Now, we do know in game and Alpha Tomb balancing these are going to change there'll be resources attached because obviously you've got to kill these bosses for resourcing game which makes them replayability so obviously this isn't the final finish standard of what you get it's kind of more test than i would imagine so don't base the loot off what you see is actually what you're going to get it's going to vastly change through alpha 2 and onwards steven did want to note that it's still not polished like i've just said with the loot and whatnot and it's still not optimized so the graphics and the fps will improve as the game progresses but that's something they're going to work on later down the line so if you think the graphics are a bit off or some it's a bit sketchy that's why and it's perfectly normal at this stage in development damn i play games that are fucking released and i've been for years and they're still not optimized but you can guarantee with ashes when they say they're gonna do something they actually fucking do it they also did say one of these improvements is that large creatures like tamak is actually gonna leave footprints however they're not enabled in this showcase smaller mobs that are all over the world you know more populated ones won't leave behind footprints one i imagine it it would cause more lag load issues and whatnot and i don't really think it's necessary and i'm totally fine with that your character leaving footsteps these giant monsters and maybe down the line these things will change but all in all they're pretty much doing everything i think they should balancing graphical content and quality but at the same time making sure they can get that performance as high as possible and that's bang on another thing to note was world boss respawn timers will not be set in the same place they'll be variable as will the location response so it makes camping and farming that that much harder so basically you're not just going to be like this boss spawns here all the time always at this time so mathematically i can play the game like a fucking android and just farm this one area and then camp it and you will constantly have pvp or people camping it and eventually it'll get quite annoying because it dies within a second and you never really get to 
experience it when you first come into the game earlier on. And I think that's quite common in many things, many MMOs or many other games. And it's nice to see them doing this. I do agree to it. And I think it's the right direction. And hopefully they stay the fuck with that. Now, to mock being left alive in the world for too long is going to affect the land management systems. Now, I won't go into that because we've learnt modes of that and I do have another video on that. And I think that is really fucking cool. Now, it's been talked about a lot in live streams in the past due to the fact he's knocking over numerous trees. So if he's knocking over trees, potentially stamping down vegetation and affecting the ecosystem, that has a huge knock on effect on everything so you've got to bear that in mind so killing him is probably something you need to do to mox difficulty will never scale instead as the nodes in the world changes due to the played interactions so will the content within the world players will want to take into account that this is an open world boss and it is a limited resource this is going to create scenarios where players will attack you as they also want to do the boss and like i said in the stream when we were all watching it together with the guild this looks easier now and didn't look too difficult i think someone had mentioned but you're not taking into consideration when you're PvPing about 30, 40, maybe more other fuckers are gonna come over, try and kill you. And if you've done the percentage damage, you're like, oh, well, we've done the most damage, we'll get the loot. Well, no, not necessarily, because they kill you. They reset a big chunk of that health with the healing and they damage it. Now then they have the most damage if it logs that way and they get the loot. And also people will literally do it just to fuck you over so you don't get the set resources to slow down your guild, increase their guild's growth or their alliance or their zoo wise area of political influence or power because you want to slow other people down so you can increase and get stronger meaning there's less chance in the long run you get sieged and lose that there's going to be a very political aspect to this game and if you're not used to that a lot of people won't understand it but the warfare is going to be heavy in this game and it wouldn't even be classed as griefing because yes they are killing you in camping areas but there's a bigger reason in play than just being a dick and people will have to expect that so it makes these bosses very dynamic tricky and extremely fun You'll have also noticed during the live stream that a few players seem to have a new weapon in the hand that appeared as a blue orb or some type of gauntlet. This is called a spell focus and it's used in the offhand slot and when using it, it'll increase casting abilities of the players. Now we've seen this and we were like, is it a gauntlet? What is that? That's weird. It wasn't really addressed at first and we were kind of speculating what it is. So it is now good to know that this is there and we haven't really heard too much about these and obviously there was portion launches and other things. So it'd be nice to see what they have been working on behind the scenes and what other shit we're going to get in Alpha 2 or as the game developed. It's nice to see this constantly implement new things and it did really look smart. Um, a lot of the graphics, the effects and the way it played was pretty fucking awesome. I was really happy with what I've seen this month. I think it was genuinely a really good stream in my honest opinion. So that was this month's live stream, the May live stream. Genuinely feel really happy with what we found out about Alpha 2. It is bad for the guys that can't get the package within three months. It is what it is but it shows me the hitting milestones have hit the targets and they're generally in the right direction definitely will be dropping next year at alpha 2 i don't know if it'll be summertime or later on i suppose it depends how ready they feel because they have a shit ton of testers clearly and they want to make this as good as possible because their eyes will be there like no other game for some time i feel i feel the world boss and the information we got and the progression we've seen is super awesome i will be getting more videos up and i do appreciate the spot so if you could hit the subscribe button give this video a share drop a comment in the comment section below let me know what you think hit the like button and just kind of get involved in the community head over to the forums keep the feedback on them going i know it's quiet and we ain't gonna get it for a long time you know we still potentially six nine ten ten months away i don't know from the half two but that time will fly and that means we can give our feedback we can give some solid info to them and help them develop the game because it isn't actually that long before we get into half two so we really want to give them as much feedback and as shit as possible so when we go in half two it's fun enjoyable and it's less work for them to implement and any issues you see that maybe I haven't addressed other content creators haven't addressed that could be potentially massively overlooked that could be game breaking or could cause issues fire that into the forums I mean you can hit up reddit but they are warlords over there for the most part some are really good but some are just there to be toxic pricks let's be honest and get involved in the discord now if you are looking for a guild recruiting but we are semi hardcore only taking on alpha 2 guys so do bear that in mind if you're looking for a community that you want to be actively talking about Ashes creation hit the link in the description below and join but if you are a dead account you will be removed because we want an active members we're not looking for sheer numbers and mobs of people but all in all that is the full video rounded up i really do appreciate you watching and i'll catch you in the next one cheers